Okay, so we should be on. I want to talk a little bit about depletion and lack of energy uh, and not having enough time. Um, also, I want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, um, Hawkins' work of muscle testing. Now, whenever, whenever you do anything, because my, my journey was kidney failure and I was working in the stock market, which burnt me out and nearly died of this extreme, being an extreme high intensity, non-stop. Um, and, uh, okay, and you know, when I heard him talk about muscle testing, whenever I hold an, any kind of negative emotion, whether it's shame, guilt, fear, anger, or whatever, my acupuncture meridians blow out. You have energy lines, in Chinese medicine we have energy lines, and there's emotions uh, associated with each energy line. And whenever you, um, whenever, you, whenever I feel, you know, when I had my, uh, when I had my, and it was, it, was quite, it was quite, and Hawkins talks about it, when I had, uh, when I went to an acupuncturist with my kidney failure, you know, the guy whispered to me as I was just about to leave the door, that the kidneys are associated with the energy of fear. Mm -hmm. Fear, fear and kidneys and my energy line. So every time, so it probably meant that my whole life I was in fear. You know, around my bus, being sacked, all kinds of things. Fear, 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 that energy line gets blocked continuously. Every second there's fear, that energy line is being blown out. I mean, some people might get their kidneys blown out, some people might get heart attacks, some people might get liver cancer, some people might get all kinds of things. When your energy line is just, even for one second, and you check, your muscles will go weak. So when you do anything in life, if you've got a partner where you go into fear or anger uh, regularly, you'll be blowing out your energy lines and your body will be going weak continuously. I think uh, Hawkins did something, <coughs> when you watch an advert on TV on average, something like, I think you go weak about 15 times. They have so many messages which are based on, on limitation. Yeah. Like, you know, this perfume is going to make you sexy and everyone's going to, going, to, going to like you. And you're getting unconsciously... And if you were to check your muscles, they'd be going weak. Because that's not based on the infinite truth, that there's infinite, there's infinite love and oneness here right now. So you're getting all these messages. So, so in the stock market, there was so many, so much fear, so much pressure, so much limitation. My energy was being blown out all the time. And that led to kidney failure. You know, if you're in fear, if you're in anger, every second you're in anger. This is why I teach this thing, you know, ha, ha, ha. If you get, if you get your energies knocked out, just quickly go into the toilet and do the thymic thump to get your energies free back. And the sound, ha, 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 ha. Uh, 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 I'm thinking of a picture of Hawkins, and that resets your energy. But if you're in fear every second of the day, or if you're in anger every second of the day, uh, and you're not resetting, you know, your body is being depleted. And even if you do that for long enough, all kinds of uh, nasty things can start happening in your body. You know, you can get, you know, people sometimes go into chronic fatigue, uh, they may get kidney failure, they may get high blood pressure, uh, they may even get serious illnesses. So, when I heard that, and I had kidney failure, I mean, I was in a pretty bad place, but I knew Hawkins. Then it became that my life depends on being, uh, you know, not going into, or at clearing out fear, anger, any limiting ideas I pick up from the collective. I have to, my life depends, if I want to stay in this physical body, on clearing that out and having faith in the miraculous. I cannot allow my, I'm talking about myself, I cannot allow myself, um, any person into my life. I cannot allow any career into my life, which will add, I mean, I, oh, I already have like a ego to clear. I don't want to also take on anything, like, a, a, you know, get into a relationship which is going to increase. You know, I have to clear my stuff, I have to clear your stuff. No, thank you. <laughs> I've got enough stuff to clear, you know. <laughs> I mean, you're going to bring peace, you know, peace and harmony. I've got my own stuff to clear, so that's enough. I don't want really a career, you know, where um, I want the career that's going to be conducive to me maintaining that, you know, may, yes, in life challenges do come up, but I want to choose, you know, with the Holy Spirit's aid, that, the, you know, this is going to be, and from my own point of view, you know, it's, it's going to be the most, most potential, the most holy relationship 
for me to, to grow. But some choices you make are more from ego. You know, when you make a choice in your life which is more from ego, it brings a lot of destruction. Uh, I'm not saying anything about anybody else, I'm talking about myself here. And if you, if you choose something, if you're in a relationship or in a career or in a situation, I, um, I would pray to the Holy Spirit to reveal if, if this situation is for my highest good. You know, if it's for your highest good and you have to go through this, and, but it's serving a higher good for you, the Holy Spirit thinks so, then fair enough, stay in it and clear it. You know, cancel your beliefs, fill your feelings out, pray, f pray for the person. Um, and it might be karmically speaking that that's necessary that you stay in there and clear it for you. For me, it's like, be like if I have to clear something for someone, it's like, it might be karmically that I have to clear it for them for some karmic reason. You know, if you do past life research, you'll see it. But sometimes you're in situations in relationships or careers where it's more of an ego choice. And if it's an ego choice, it's just got the, the choice, of course, is to leave. You know, it's not to stay there for the highest good of both parties. It's actually the, the highest good is to, is to choose something else. So, um, so that's the thing. So I would pray, meditate, speak to others, spiritual, you know, speak to your trusted spiritual advisor to say, is it my ego that's keeping me in this situation and really I shouldn't be in this situation? Or is it the case? Because, you know, there is a thing. I mean, I sort of teach a lot of stuff. I teach, well, you know, we talk about the Course in Miracles and I teach the observer and feel the feelings. But there's also an intuitive thing of the Holy Spirit's guidance of, um, of you know, with each situation. And I think Hawkins described it uh, really nicely. You know, and he described it, you know, there's everything in the world which is above integrity, and there are those things which are below integrity. And if you choose some, if you choose a person in your life below integrity, or you choose an, a work environment which is below integrity, usually speaking, uh, I'm not saying in an absolute sense, but usually um, that is a destructive situation. Um, if you're choosing something which is above integrity, uh, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll, I mean I'll, um, I'll give a rough example, but that's a very clear demarcation. So when I was in active addiction, my prime motive was that I was selfish and I wanted to take all the time. That was my prime motive. And it was, I was wired to feel empty. Um, you know, if, if you had donuts, I would be tempted to take your donuts when you're not looking. You know, that was the kind of person. So I was really, and you know, I had no sense. You know, people, people below integrity, they haven't got awareness of what they do to other people. You know, it's like, I want donuts, you have donuts. If you're looking your way, I'll take your donuts and pretend I didn't take them. So that's just my thing, you know, and I can't be different to what I am because that's what I am. I just have awareness of what's good for me. I haven't reached a level of consciousness where I, I have a sense of what I've done to you. Uh, when you get above integrity, you're aware. You know, if I take this person's donuts and, and lie that I didn't take them, you know, they're going to they're going to suffer. You know, they're going to be you know they're they're going to be hungry for the rest of the evening or whatever it is. So, so or in you know there were certain career, careers I worked to where the work environment was below was below integrity. You know, I was you know where. It was just adrenaline addiction fueled environments where for me I'm, the choice would be very clear I have to leave because you're not going to clear out. You know, when the, when the hierarchy of a company is below integrity, you know, that's, you know, you know, that's, uh, that's, a, that's the thing. I'm not going to stay there and clear that. You know, I'm going I'm to leave that. Or if I'm with a person below integrity, I'm going to leave. If I'm with a person ab above integrity, it's more and more likely. One thing is, you know, you can speak to people uh, above integrity and they will listen to your point of view. Um, if you speak to someone below integrity, they'll try and manipulate the situation. Even though they will agree, they will still have an ulterior negative selfish motive. So, uh, and you'll see that um, also for me, it's like as you transcend, as you, as you, even if you want to be a, a saint or you want to be an enlightened teacher or whatever it is, um, 
you'll still be drawn to certain places and situations where to teach, and you'll be drawn away from certain situations which aren't, which are not, you're not meant to be in those situations. You're not to, meant to be around. There is the thing of, because um, uh, you want to get the context, is, is, it, is it the Holy Spirit? Is it, is it your spirit that's choosing this person or this work situation? Uh, if it is, fair enough. But sometimes, if you're, in the, if you're in a situation that's chosen by ego, the situation is not is to let that situation go. It's not to transcend it. Because you've chosen something which is at the level of ego. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, it's like, because uh, sometimes transcending can be seen like, uh, maybe I should just go to a war zone and trans start transcending in the middle of a war zone where people are shooting everyone left, right and centre. And I think, well, because I can transcend, it's not a problem. But, uh, but sometimes that's, that's more of an ego thing. I don't know if that makes sense. So yes, if I'm meant to be in a situation, then I should transcend everything and be free. But I also need to know a gross choice with a, with a relationship or with a career. And also know that, yeah. Oh, do you want to put it off? Or do you, oh, you want no, to it's fine. Yeah. Um, so I grew up with a belief that you have to make every sacrifice in order to work and bring money home. So for me, it was kind of revolutionary when I read in Dr. Hawkins' book, um, I think it's um, The Letting Go, The Pathway to Surrender, I think it's that one, where I've actually read that it's one of the biggest collective belief systems in the world, which is faulty and illusionary, is that you work hard for everything you've got, that everything only comes to you through hard, hard work. Mm. And that was it. I, I was living without a father my whole life. My father was beating the sea as a seaman all around the world. He would come home one time, once a year, in the middle of the night. And he used to be a man with a moustache that would come with presents in the middle of And I wouldn't sit in his lap because I said, who is this strange man with a moustache? I don't like him. When I was a little girl, I didn't know my dad. Even though he was happily married to my mum. And my mum had three kids and had to work really, really hard. So I only feel now, if I'm completely um, exhausted and surrendered to my work, and I work hard, that even if I can't pay my bills, I've done everything, everything that I could in order to feed my child and support the family and get a roof over our heads. And I feel if I don't work that hard, there is more to do, that I should be working harder and more. And my mum will re-emphasise this to this day, every day on the phone to me, well, such is life, you've got to work, Claudia. You know, mum, I'm dead, such is life, you've got to work, Claudia. It's soon Friday, the rest of the weekend, don't you worry about that. Mum, I'm dying, I'm dying, I've got idiopathic neutropenia. You know, I have no, almost no white blood cells in my body. If I have a temperature of the body because I get a cold, there is 70% chances of me dying through the high level temperature without anybody being able to save you. That's how serious my condition is, mum. I've got it through my last job, you know, so it was like, yeah, yeah, don't worry, Friday's coming, Claudia. <laughs> so, you know, so I have, I'm, I'm growing up with this, so I feel that I've got to be doing this, and I feel that if I stopped and said that I wouldn't be able to live with myself, if I just said, well, you know, you work to my partner, or, you know, we'll just have what we have, or, you know, we don't have enough, I feel like it's always just, I know the work is not the source of my money, and God is, um, I don't know, does, that, or does all of that make sense? Yeah. But that's how I feel. So if I went and resigned tomorrow, like what you say, like I would, like for yourself, you speak as you say, I would leave. I feel like, wow, that's amazing. Like, I don't feel like I have a choice. You know, I don't feel, I never felt that I have a voice. I always feel I'm standing behind the glass, screaming without a tone. Like no one can hear me. Well, yes, you know, this thing, you know, when I was taken to kidney failure and, I was, and the doctors were trying to save my life and I had that spiritual experience and then I got to meet Hawkins' work and got to meet Hawkins, luckily, in, in America, you know, I knew he was telling the truth and I knew that my level of consciousness, if I'm feeling fear and separation, that will attract destruction. And I knew what he was telling about muscle testing was true because I'd, I'd met kinesiologists and everything that made my body go strong. And if, if, you've got, if you've got, actually that's one way, if you can have access to a kinesiologist or a muscle checking person who's good at what they're doing, you just hold a picture of your work, uh, or you picture, you know, 
if you hold a picture of your boss and someone checks your arm when you're connected and you go weak, that boss is below integrity. If you hold uh, you know, a photo of your company and you check your thing and your, your arm goes weak, that company is below integrity. Um, I personally wouldn't work in a company where my boss and the company is below integrity. Personally, I just wouldn't choose it. When you hold, even if you don't like a person or a company and you check with your muscles and you stay strong, that they, they run to spiritual values, you know. So it's anything your body goes strong with means your acupuncture meridians are staying in tune. It means it won't kill you. Because for me to, you know, I've had, uh, I've had miracles. I was discharged from the asthma clinic. I was discharged from the rheumato rheumatology clinic for gout. I had a transplant, I'm no longer on a dialysis machine. It was like as you keep your meridians and you make choices just to maintain your, the infinite state of peace and serenity, and you make very difficult choices to let go of people, places, and situations which keep you into fear and separation, you know, all the miracles started happening. Mm -hmm. Also, miracles came in, but there was, you know, it's like the ego has these belief systems, like you have to work hard, you have to sacrifice, you, uh, or otherwise you're being bad, um, you know, or you should feel guilty if you don't sacrifice for everyone. You should, you have to look like a martyr to prove your existence on this planet. So all kinds of things you can be programmed with. But then I thought, no, actually, if I feel guilty, that's, that's the resonance of guilt. I will attract punishment to me. I do not need, I do not want to feel guilt for anyone. Because guilt is the vibration of attracting punishment. You know, fear is going to attract destruction. Even anger, it's not, you know, I don't want to hold that for very long. So I want to clear those. And, I, you know, my life depended on, and I knew, I believed 100% in what Hawkins taught, you know, is clearing those emotions out and, and, uh, and then trusting. And so for me, even though I can understand the collective fear in the world of like, but my experience has been, I can just share my experience, that when I focused on my vibration, clearing out the fear, and letting go things which I felt were not for me to take on board, you know, not to try and get into a relationship. You know, the thing is, my ego is attracted to destruction. You know, my ego would be attracted to a relationship with a woman who's not good for me. That's my, when I'm in my ego, I'm attracted to a, rela a bad relationship. But for me, it's, it looks exciting. I'll be attracted to a career. I was attracted to a career in the stock market, one of the highest rates of heart attack where they run themselves to the death. But to my ego, it's like, do you want to be, uh, do you want to work in the stock market? Or do you want to be like, well, I mean, uh, nowadays I think, you know, a great job would be like, you know, in those cathedrals, just stand there and just watch the tourists go by. And you collect, <laughs> collect, you collect a yes. paycheck mm -hmm. and you do nothing, just stand there in the observer and they pay you to do that in the cathedrals. So <laughs> that would be like, but at that point it was like, no, you need a job, mm -hmm. once you get a job, you know, so, when I'm in ego, I choose things which destroy me. And I'm attracted to making choices which destroy me. I keep going back to things which destroy me. They create fear and excitement. And everything my, uh, uh, my ego will be attracted to things where I'm up one second and I'm down the next. I'm up second, you know, you've just got a big client in, you're amazing. And then you haven't got a client in, you're crap. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like that. Or, you know, or some, some person who's like this huge dynamic of up and down. Mm -hmm. But now, it's like I want things where I can be in silence and stillness and observing in the infinite place. And I know that will bring me everything I need. I'm, not, I'm less attracted. I can still be attracted to the ego things of excitement and drama and danger and whatever. But I know that stuff will quickly destroy me. Because I know my meridians, if I hold into fear and drama, everything will start blowing out. And everything that has been given to me by grace will start being lost. So it's that, that thing of that very... Now, if you're in the right place, if you're with the right relationship and the right career, then you transcend it. If it feels like this is no, this is a spiritual choice and I have to transcend it. I have to stay in this romantic relationship. I have to stay in this career and transcend it. And it feels like it's the right thing. The Holy Spirit is saying it's the right thing. Then transcend it, you know. Cancel every single belief that's negative around it. Feel out the feelings, be in the observer. Pray for a miracle to see the situation differently and just transcend it. But there is a difference between choosing a situation that's in ego and, and trying to transcend it and transcending things that you should be transcending.
So yeah. there is a spiritual discernment. And this is one of the things for people, it's like, you know, oh, I'm going to be forgiving and loving to everyone. And if I get a difficult person, I have to stay with them forever and just keep on forgiving them, even though they steal my donuts every day, even though they tell me I'm terrible. Uh, my job is just to stay with them forever and keep forgiving them. Uh, so I'm not in that camp. I mean, there is spiritual discernment, uh, which you get. As you clear your ego, you get this kind of... See, your ego is based on finite information. It has finite limited beliefs and information. But when you, cl when you go into the infinite realm, you're, collecting, you're, collecting, you're connecting into the infinite bank of all, all knowledge, all awareness. So beyond your ego, when you connect to that infinite inspiration and direction and orchestration, that is tuned into everything. It's beyond, it's information beyond your ego. And when you tune into that, that always says, you know, well, you know stay with this person, stay in this career and transcend it. But at that infinite, infinite realm, you'll also be choosing things which make your body go strong. So muscle testing will also confirm what your higher intuition or God's intuition is stating in that situation. That's just talking about myself, but for me, my life depends. You know, I've been in kidney failure, dialysis machines, total exhaustion, mm -hmm. and high, high, high careers. And, uh, and if I was to choose that again, I know it'd blow out all my meridians, and I'd be back to where I was with my health and death very, very quickly. Yeah, because all of this that's happening with me, it's, it's, it's like from a divine grace. I went to feel complete, completely at one within a space of eight weeks to this place today when I'm exhausted, crying, depleted and can't see my way out of it and I spent three weeks on a holiday in that time, in those eight weeks. That's how, quick it, it, how quickly it is. And interesting what you mentioned earlier about people, what your ideal job would be because when all of that happened in my previous workplace I've been looking at um, to work in a church and organize something, organize a little schedule for a, for a pastor or, mm -hmm. you know, like a little secretary or taking some, like meeting notes or somewhere, something, you know, where you are surrounded by energy that you want to be surrounded with. And a lot of people in government I worked with, when they were having a really bad day, the only thing they would say is, I wish, I wish I worked on the till scanning items. Yeah. The, the, uh, it, like, it's, like, it's almost like, spiritual or not, we just all want to feel at peace and connected. Mm. And... Do you mind if I add some thoughts? Uh, I'd, I'd rather, rather not at this point, yeah. We'll get a discussion a bit later. But. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you so much. Thank you.